Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, trend update, Israel bombs Syrian Research Center, allegedly. Uh, September 7, 2017, scripture references out of Jeremiah 49, verse 23, concerning Damascus, Hamath and Arpad are put to shame, for they have heard bad news, they are disheartened, there is anxiety by the sea, it cannot be calmed. Let's get a quick lay of the land here. Down here to the south and west would be Israel. North of Israel is Lebanon. We have the country of Syria, Damascus, down here in the southwest. Hama is where we're going, or ancient Hamath. And we'll back this out just a smidge. And this would be the northern part of Lebanon is what we're looking at right here, down here in the southwest portion of the map. Uh, but here is Hama. And Hama means fortress. And in the times of Jeremiah, Hamath was a city in a valley by the Orontes River. Hamath was the capital of the northern kingdom of ancient Syria. Today, this is the city known as Hama, Syria. It's also a region. This is the Hama region of what is modern-day Syria. And so we're going to zero in on where some action took place last night. Hamas, Syria is prophetically significant. 2,600 years ago, the prophet Jeremiah wrote about Hamath, Syria. And so here we go. In tight. In the early morning hours, Israeli Defense Force jets bombed a chemical plant on the outskirts of the ancient city. And the operation took place at approximately 2.30 in the morning. And this location has been dubbed as a scientific research center for chemical weapons. Missile development is also believed to be conducted at the site. Multiple weapons convoys were also hit during the operation. Two Syrian soldiers are reported as dead. And so, you know, as this is developing, we're starting to get more uh, information. Uh, sounds of explosions heard in the area resulted from unknown enemy targeting one of the military points northeast of Masaif. Saif. Uh, sounds of several explosions heard northeast in the countryside of Hama. Not known what cause. Israeli aircraft have reportedly targeted and destroyed suspected Syrian chemical weapons facility. Israeli planes attacked military position in Syria, killing two people. That's per the Syrian state media. And this is a 10 years after Israel strikes nuclear reactor in Syria, September 6, 2007. Um... Also reportedly used by forces from allies, Iran and Hezbollah. Iranian experts were based at the facility, allegedly. So, this is what they went after. Israel allegedly went after last night. Now, also new, this has happened since the incident. Uh, Russia is now flying from Latakia to Damascus, and they also have uh, Russian Air Force A-50s now in the Tartus airspace. So clearly there's been a response to some of this stuff. Now, of note, Amos Yadlin, he is the former head of Israeli military intelligence and executive director of Tel Aviv University's Institute for National Security Studies. And in response to the attack in Syria, Yadlin tweeted the following. So we no longer go to news outlets. We take to Twitter to make our comments. And I'm going to briefly summarize the comments from uh, Amos Yadlin. And I quote, the reported attack overnight is not routine. It is a military scientific Syrian site in which they produce, among other things, precision missiles, some of which will be significant in the next military campaign. So this guy's in anticipating there's going to be some sort of military conflict. 
Uh, also, chemical weapons and explosives that have killed thousands of Syrian civilians. If it was an Israeli attack, it is finally an Israeli moral statement about the massacre in Syria. So nobody in, in Israel is admitting that this has taken place. Uh, they're not saying, hey, we did it, uh, but <laughs> it would appear that was the case. Uh, further comments, Israel won't allow for empowerment and production of strategic arms. Israel intends to enforce its red lines despite the fact that the great powers are ignoring them. The presence of Russian air defenses does not prevent airstrikes attributed to Israel. Now, it's important to keep the escalation in check and to prepare for a Syrian-Iranian Hezbollah response and even opposition from Russia, close quote. Now, here's, uh, again, the link is provided for this guy's uh, Twitter account. If you folks want to check this out, he does a nice job. He numbers all of his uh, comments in order. So, statement nine, statement eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And he does it if it's not good enough for you in English. He also lays these things out in Hebrew for those folks who can read Hebrew. But uh, clearly sending a message uh, to the world. And again, this guy is the, uh, you know, the former head of Israeli military intelligence and is now the executive director at the Institute for National Security Studies in Tel Aviv. So... Um, you know, which does beg the question, um, what happened to the Russian S-400 missile response? I mean, the impression given is that uh, the S-400 missile system would be able to uh, defend jet attacks or fighter jet attacks. Quiet. There was nothing. Did they let it happen? Did they not know it was coming? Makes you wonder what was going on. Now, in response, Syria has announced the following warning of dangerous repercussions of this aggressive action to the security and stability of the region. I mean, Syria is in civil war, and they want to lecture the world about security and stability in the region. I mean, it's a joke. Uh, you know, translation, uh, we'll go after Israel, and so will some others. I mean, and, and, these, and these groups, these are blocks of Shia countries. So you have Hezbollah, Lebanon. Syria, Iran, these are all Shia Muslim groups. Now, this facility in the past uh, that was hit, the United States, States had sanctioned this research facility, and I suppose now these uh, sanctions have been rendered useless. If you're interested in details, we've got a link provided, jpostgod.com. Initial Israel attacked chemical weapons facility in Syria, Arab media claims. So even the Israeli newspapers are quoting uh, Arab media claims. They're not saying anything. They're just quoting, hey, this is, these, this, this is what the Arabs have said. So Now, the, the other thing that's kind of curious, when we get down here to the south, the southern Sunni Muslims, you know, as opposed to the Shia Muslims who are up here north of Israel and to the, to the east, the southern Sunni Muslims, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Oman, they are curiously quiet. And they're not saying anything, which makes one wonder what is going on behind the scenes. And it also kind of makes sense, you know, we'll skip ahead to Ezekiel 38, talks about Sheba, Dedan, and Tarshish being quiet and just watching on like, hey, what are you guys doing? You know, in reference to Magog and friends or cousins, brothers, etc. It's like, what's going on here? And they're kind of quiet on this deal. They're just sitting here. They've observed it. They're not saying anything. And, you know, again, it's all Shia folks, Shia Muslims who are aligned, Syria, Iran, Hezbollah, etc. But the bottom line is this. The geopolitical situation in the Middle East just got more interesting. So we'll keep an eye on this. It is worth watching. And if you're interested in these things, please feel free to check out paulthepoke.com. Ezekiel 38, 39, Damascus, Syria. Thanks a lot. Appreciate y'all listening. Take care.